Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox. I'm the Compliance Evangelist, and I'd like to welcome you to a special five-part podcast series on international due diligence investigations, finding the needle in the corporate haystack. This series is sponsored by Infortal Worldwide. Established in 1985, Infortal Worldwide has conducted over 2 million investigations globally. Infortal specializes in investigations for FCPA vendor risk management, mergers and acquisitions, transactions, board due diligence, and screening of executives internationally, in addition to routine background checks. Infortal has implemented tried and tested methodologies combined with new tools to reveal 30% more hidden and undisclosed information other than investigations. For more information, check out their website, www.infertile.com. Over the next five podcasts, we will be exploring such issues as when basic due diligence is no longer enough, given some recent government, FCPA, and international anti-corruption enforcement actions, what do CCOs need to know and want to know? What is and what is not working in due diligence investigations today? M&A successor liability issues, reputational damage, how they might be avoided by more robust investigative due diligence. And finally, with the changes in global policies regarding data privacy, the changes in technology with AI, what are some of the innovations and progress we will see in, in investigative due diligence going forward? Throughout this series, I am joined by Candace Tao. Candace is the founder, founder and CEO of Infertile Worldwide. I know you will find this series useful and instructive. The series on international due diligence investigations, finding the needle in the corporate haystack, is a special presentation of the Compliance Podcast Network. Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox, and I'm back for our final episode in the five-part exploration of international due diligence investigations and how you find needles in corporate haystacks. I'm joined, as always, by Candace Tao, the founder and president of Infortal. And today we're going to take a, a step back or perhaps a step broader and take a look at global enforcement. This is something that certainly, if not bedevils many chief compliance officers, is at the forefront of their thinking because we all have to deal with uh, foreign something if we're uh, doing business outside the United States. So, Candace, uh, welcome. Thank you, Tom. Great to be back. So, Candace, um, probably at the top of uh, many CCOs and, frankly, business executives' minds right now, and, and even this week, we get another huge data breach, is not only cybersecurity, but in the FCPA or anti-corruption compliance world, GDPR and data privacy. How has have these rules or these uh, SEC I hate to use the word suggestions, but even suggestions change the due diligence industry and what you do for uh, with Infratel. Well, that's uh, interesting, Tom, because it's really playing out currently as we speak. Um, it's obviously we have the the um, European General Data Protection Regulation that is uh, affecting data privacy. Um, globally, even though it's primarily mandated for the 28 member states. However, it is changing the the face of how information is exchanged and transferred. But more importantly than that, in terms of due diligence, is how will we be able to investigate criminal activity, um, whether it's been identified yet as criminal activity or not, and that's the key part of it, um, under GDPR, under the new uh, GDPR regime because we don't want criminals to be able to hide and be able to rescind their data online, obviously. So there is a clause that allows for uh, if someone's uh, been involved in criminal activity, but what if it's not that clear yet? What if it's something that's an evolving situation? There's not uh, any obvious criminal conviction Uh, It may be a civil matter, and it may be that uh, it's a scandal that's breaking. So how is that going to impact um, due diligence investigations in the future, particularly if the person has any uh, connection to EU countries? And so that's one aspect of it. 
Candice, uh, let me change the focus just a little bit uh, because I've been really throughout this series wanting to ask you the following. Is artificial intelligence a game changer in due diligence investigation? Or frankly, will there always be the need for the shoe leather detective? <laughs> That's a wonderful question. So um, AI is definitely going to be a game changer in certain aspects of the business, of the due diligence investigative business. Um, <clears throat> rapidly, I think that's becoming obvious. Uh, massive data sets uh, require some type of artificial intelligence to sort through and analyze the information. It's particularly important um, for internal controls, for accounting, books and records provisions to identify massive fraud, for example. Um, certainly much easier to do with artificial intelligence. Um, how far is that along yet? Um, I think that's still developing. But I think there's all, uh, always, and I'll, I'll uh, frame that by saying at least in the next few years, going to be a need for the traditional investigative approach, the, the boots on the ground, you know, um, going out and checking facilities. Artificial intelligence is going to have a limited ability to do that, I think, at least in the foreseeable future. Maybe 10, 20 years from now, that'll be a whole lot easier. Um, we'll be doing um, drone-based <laughs> due diligence. <laughs> but um, in terms of how effective is, would that be in the next few years, I think it's going to also be limited in, in a similar way to most data aggregators today, where they do find, um, they say they find about 80% of the information. But I, I would suspect it's perhaps a little bit less than that. There's always going to be that other 20% that they can't find. And so artificial intelligence is not necessarily going to pick that up. They, it might, but uh, it would, I believe, still require some, definitely some human intervention on the investigative side. It's a great question, though. <laughs> So uh, maybe we could now even go from AI to the, even the veiled land of the future. And you have, uh, I've, I've had the privilege to, to know you for quite some time or some time, but you've been in this business for literally 33 years and you uh, have seen numerous innovations, but where do you see sort of innovation and progress going beyond simply an AI being able to look at uh, massive data sets? And, and where do you hope to take Infratal on this journey? So there, there's a broad swath of information, uh, and most investigators are about finding information, essentially. Uh, aside from um, catching criminals, it would be, where do we find that information? How do we go about looking for it? So certainly uh, AI will be a tool in that process in the future, less so today, but uh, I'm sure that's coming. But it will really be about sharpening and honing the due diligence process for, particularly under the uh, Foreign Corrupt Practices Act, to find where are companies hiding their information? How are they hiding their information? Uh, some of that is a tried and tested methodology that has existed for many years, decades in fact, in terms of how do you find, how do you uh, look at shell companies? Um, how do you find information about people who are trying to hide it deliberately? And so some of that's not new, but the tools that we use are new. And how effectively we use those tools. How do we, um, a lot of companies today, for example, are looking at uh, adverse media searches. Adverse media doesn't provide you all the information that you need that the CCO needs in order to be effective in risk ranking. It does provide information, but not enough. Um, and so it would be looking, for us, it will be looking at how do we craft that in, in a way to be most useful for CCOs and in a way that's um, price competitive um, for them to be able to expand what they do. In other words, level one due diligence we know is not sufficient. But, and yet most companies today use it. We, we know, and uh, we being investigators, know that you need at least the level two check. You need at least that uh, es essential uh, media search. Then how do you make that more effective? And what tools do you need to make that more effective, more, uh, more competitive for the end user, for the, um, for the large corporation, so that they can 
come up with better results in their risk ranking and really then be able to target, effectively target um, their red flag issues. And so that's really about helping the CCO to not only be more compliant, um, but to be able to yield a program that has some uh, bite to it and be more effective with their third parties. So that's what I would say for us. Ken, it's one of the things that I think many intimidates many chief compliance officers is that they uh, get information, they receive data, but they're one, they're not quite sure what it means, and two, they're not quite sure how to use it. Is that something that you can help your clients or customers understand? What does this data that you have uh, unearthed mean? Is is that part of uh, what a good due diligence investigator helps a client with to help them understand the what it means for uh, adverse media or a- anything really yes. reputational wise. Definitely. So um, one of the things that we do for our clients across the board is we provide recommendations. Um, well, we, we summarize all the information that we find, of course, because the factual findings uh, on their own are extremely valuable and important. Um, but then we make recommendations to our clients based on what we see from a security standpoint. So we're not, giving them advice from a legal standpoint. So quite a different uh, subject, that's their domain. Um, so we, we make recommendations. What does this information really mean? Is it is it innocuous or does it really, is it um, of concern? Is it something that should be looked at further? Perhaps we've done a level one or a level two due diligence and now we would strongly recommend doing uh, a third level, the third level of due diligence, a deeper dive, maybe a deep dive that is focused on certain things, doesn't have to be a deep dive of everything. And so that's a very, very important tool that chief compliance officers um, really appreciate and value in terms of the work that we provide to them. And it really helps them to shape and sharpen their program. And, uh, And also, it, you, one can miss uh, important information. Uh, I mentioned earlier uh, conflicts of interest. Some conflicts of interest can be very substantial and others are not. Uh, it can be that uh, a, a company has offices where they say they have offices, but yet when we go there and look at the offices in the field, on the ground, um, they're not offices at all. One, one place was a military compound. Nobody showed up for work there. So these are kinds of recommendations that are very important for the CCO and uh, do help them to be more effective in their compliance program. In in that particular example, of course, the company um, decided not to do business with that third party. And so these are critical um, and strategic assessments for the CCO um, directionally in terms of where they should go and where they should spend their money. What should they target? So I think that helps them a great deal. Well, Candace, unfortunately, we're near the end of our time, but I've been visiting with Candace Tao. We have had a five-part podcast series where we have explored really in-depth international due diligence investigations and finding the needle in the corporate haystack. Candace, uh, I wanted to thank you again. I look forward to uh, continuing the conversation with you. Thank you, Tom. I look forward to that for the future, too. Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox. Thank you for joining me on this episode of International Due Diligence Investigations, Finding the Needle in the Corporate Haystack. I hope you'll join me again tomorrow for our next episode. Also, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact Infertal at their website, which is www.infertal.com. This five-part podcast series has been a special presentation of the Compliance Podcast Network.